We need more energy from all sources. Safely develop oil and natural gas right here by expanding access onshore and off. Do not let the fossil fools of corpocracy dictate to you or your neighbor that fracking is safe. Tapping more than a century's worth of domestic natural gas and developing Canadian oil sands for U.S. consumers. Benzene is linked to breast cancer, according to the Institute of Medicine. All that could put a million more Americans to work. These are literally our life support systems. I mean, who would rather drink uncontaminated water or poison? Oil and gas drilling is coming to El Paso County and possibly Colorado Springs. We're talking hydraulic fracturing or fracking today. And in the loop. New technologies are safely unlocking vast domestic supplies of oil and natural gas, like energy from shale. It's a process, also known as hydraulic fracturing, that involves injecting massive amounts of water, sand, and a toxic cocktail of chemicals deep underground using extreme pressure. That pressure creates cracks in the rock bed, releasing the gas. We're sitting on a bunch of shale gas. There's natural gas under my town. It's a game changer. It means cleaner, cheaper, American-made energy. Yes, that's everybody's concern is that we're going to crack this rock and somehow fracture into the water table and then allow those two to communicate. That's physically impossible to do, actually. Colorado's own Laramie Fox Hills Aquifer was officially documented as contaminated August 1st, 2009 by thermogenic gas, which is created from fracking, and toluene, a chemical, a fracking chemical. They want to do that here in Colorado Springs. I just could not believe that you would even think about doing this within the city limits. Drilling and fracking in residential zones in the city. Oh, wow. So a lot of the emotion and the argument that's brought up just isn't borne out by the data when you go actually get on the ground and look at it. The state was protecting or hiding their data from the public, and it shocked the hell out of me. I was sitting there with a couple million official documents in my hand saying, this is all wrong. Everything about this in Colorado is wrong, and it's absolutely harmful to us and the environment. I don't believe that uh, there's been enough uh, uh, science to show that it's that it's dangerous. In France, fracking has been banned. In Quebec and New Jersey, there are moratoriums in place. Thousands of jobs. Use the most advanced technology to protect our water. Billions in the economy. In northeastern Ohio, work was suspended this week at five wells used to dispose of wastewater from oil and gas drilling. The suspension follows a dozen minor earthquakes in that area since last spring. I was absolutely shocked and astounded when I started learning what has happened in Pennsylvania, parts of New York, in our own, our own state, and how many people's lives have been ruined their homes, their livestock, their crops, the air, the water. So, is this the answer to our energy woes or a risky, untested science? President Obama this week pushed for expanding natural gas production as a way to fuel economic growth. And with smart policies, we can create even more great jobs and could generate billions to fund schools, roads, and other services. The vast majority of people here think it's wonderful. They think there'll be jobs, they think they'll be able to keep their families here, they'll be able to pay for education. Um, but we find that all is good on paper, but when things happen that ruin the value of your property, ruin the health of your family, then it, that all goes out the window. If you were walking down the street and you saw money laying in the street, you would pick it up and say, man, this is my lucky day. Well, here in El Paso County, we have this treasure laying at our feet. All we have to do is pick it up. So let's say that they discover there's something wrong with the water. What, I mean, do they bond up for that in the application or how, do we, uh, how are we assured that there'll be money to pay for any remediation? You know, I don't know that I have an answer to that. Let me look here real quick on the, the summary that I have. It's an absolute economic boom. Going into it is clearly goes against all 
principles of economics. Uh, you know, it costs more money to frack than any GDP boost you might get on the other end of fracking. It, it takes more energy to frack than the energy you get at on the other side of fracking. The only thing that goes is going to increase is debt. And the fracking projects, they maybe last one, two years at most. Uh, then the sponsors declare bankruptcy. They move on. They leave the environmental catastrophe for someone else to, to, to deal with and pay for. But the country's debt will have gone up. And the price of energy will not go down. Uh, it won't go down. The price of energy will continue to go up. For you know, another economic certainty is that the amount of money that the government's going to print to subsidize the frackers will create inflationary pressures and force the price of energy higher. It doesn't make any sense in any context, in any way, unless you're in the business of selling bonds collateralized by horrible non-economic energy projects, then it makes sense. The government is influenced by consultants who bring in these foreign companies for a quick buck. As long as it's in a gargantuan amount of money up front, everyone involved gets a huge paycheck up front, then they, at that point, they essentially walk away and they let kind of the whole thing fall apart over the next two or three years, but by then they're long gone. So it, it loses on every single possible way you could look at it. In Colorado, most of the West, the people that own the mineral rights underground are not the same people that own the surface. The person who owns those minerals has the right to get them out in the least disruptive way they can. Our results indicate that in 2011, the total monetary damages from conventional air pollution emissions from Pennsylvania-based shale gas extraction activities ranged from about 7.2 to $32 million. Huge economic boost. It's, I don't see why we, we don't do it more often. It's the money's the one really good thing. The rest of it pretty much sucks, working really long hours. In my case, I was living in my car. This is a huge opportunity for Ohio. Why would we not capitalize on all that and put all these folks to work and have all this economic investment? $900 million by Chesapeake, $500 million by Mark West, and so many others. I guarantee you that any money that the city earns from these activities will be negated in the future and spent in the future for cleanup, mitigation, and long-term effects of fracking. If tourists will not come here because we have highly polluted air and contaminated water, then the city's major source of revenue is gone. I think our state has roughly 675,000 people. You know, they think the state of North Dakota could grow to over a million people. And a lot of those new jobs will be in the oil and gas industry. When somebody gives you a jobs figure and says this will bring X number of jobs to your location, how many of those jobs are transient jobs? How many of those jobs are workers being brought in from out of state? It's a success story he's working hard to protect by adhering to strict safety and environmental guidelines, by making sure the oil and natural gas wells are encased in multiple layers of steel and cement. Now, for a long time, we believed what the developers were telling us, that drilling muds are benign, that they are safe, until we got an urgent request to see if we had any information about 40 products used in Wyoming during drilling. Today's technology allows us to tap these resources and protect the environment. The last time this program was updated for Colorado alone, there were 246 products and 278 chemicals on our list. 93% of the 246 products had identifiable health effects. Fracking chemicals are linked to bone, liver, and breast cancers, gastrointestinal, circulatory, respiratory, developmental, as well as brain and nervous system disorders. And they are in frac waste and may find their way into drinking water and air. And it gets worse. Today, waste from Pennsylvania gas wells, waste that may also contain unacceptable levels of radium, is routinely dumped across state lines into landfills in New York, Ohio, and West Virginia. 43% of the products on our list contain endocrine disruptors, chemicals that can interfere with the development of individuals before they are born and cause irreversible lifetime changes in their health and how they function later in life. The first one was done by Lisa McKenzie, the Colorado School of Public Health, and what it shows is that people living near wells have higher cancer rates. 66% was the increased likelihood of cancer. That's at a half a mile. That's over 2,000 feet. How far is far enough? And for many of you, I think no drilling is only as, is as far as you want to go and will only accept that. The estimate of the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Preservation is 
one serious environmental concern for every 150 wells drilled to date. There have been more people killed by cantaloupes, tainted cantaloupes in Colorado in the past year than by oil and gas in the past 60. There's no documented deaths in that area. There's no documented uh, of the uh, groundwater. I know there's been miscarriages here that, that live with gas wells like right across the street. There's been a mother that had a miscarriage and a, a year later had a baby and while she was breastfeeding it, two months old, it died. And then another miscarriage in that same family that lives around these wells. So it's pretty obvious that something's wrong. These are young, healthy girls that are just having miscarriages and losing babies. This is a case January 13, 2011 in Florence, Colorado. The Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission requested emergency funding for explosive levels of methane seeping into occupied residential homes from plugged and abandoned wells. Almost every house, at least every other house, has probably had someone with cancer or someone in their family with major birth defects. At least the job that I was in, you're dealing with a lot of chemicals, you're breathing a ton of exhaust. Um, I'm still suffering right now. I was at the doctor today with bronchitis. Uh, I've already been through one course of antibiotics that didn't work. The gas industry says it's safe. Here's what our neighbors in Pennsylvania say who have been living with fracking since 2004. We were doing just fine until this drilling started and then all of a sudden we're getting contaminants in our water and we find it's not safe to drink. If it was safe then people wouldn't get sick and animals wouldn't die from drinking the water. We got our air reports back yesterday, they found that there are seven chemicals that are over the legal limit. I've had inflammation of the cornea and chemical burns to my eyes. My children have had nosebleeds and blisters in their mouths. The gas is going to be gone and we're still going to have dirty water and dirty air. There's no money or anything worth trading your drinking water for. When we first moved here, it was heaven on earth. Now it's hell on earth. You have clean air and water, preserve that, preserve that with your life.